So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this post-match press conference with Team South Africa. As before, please do raise your hand very clearly when you want to ask a question, and do wait for the microphone because we have simultaneous interpretation as before. So, delighted to welcome to my right, Coach Jacques Ninabert. Well done. <laughs> and to his right, Captain Zia Colosi. <laughs> well done. Okay, so let's go to questions, please. One at the front, thank you. Hi, good evening. Hi, Jacques. Nice to hear. Well done. Um, what about outcome and result today, and then, then overall performance? Was it just like in the job done? Yeah, look, uh, <clears throat> this was a slippery one, I think, for us. You know, you play play the number five team in the world ranked, uh, and they deserve it. And, and we all could see what they were doing uh, in their warm-up games and how they pushed uh, France and the big teams that they have won in the lead-up to this World Cup. So for us, it was always going to be a slippery one, and we knew it's going to be a grind. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, if you, if you look at history, it's probably, uh, I think last time we played them, it, the, the scoreline was, or, or the, 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 the uh, point deficit was, or differential was 15 points, and I think it was 15 today again, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that's normally history shows that, but but they're a tough team that will stick in there and grind, and we, we knew it's going to be a grind. Thank you. Second row, please. Jacques, um, first one, Eben, uh, the extent of his injury, uh, his shoulder injury? Yes, uh, to, to be honest, I'll lie. Uh, I haven't even spoken to the doc. Uh, we, we, it will probably be something that will be assessed tomorrow. Um, I, I, in the game, they said it's, it's a shoulder, uh, that, uh, and that's why it came off. But I mean, I will, I will speculate in terms of the extent of it. I, I've got no clue. I suspect there's quite a few uh, sore bodies. Uh, any other injuries or players that you're worried about? Again, I haven't discussed. Normally, the process after a game like this is the doc and the medical team will start working with the guys. Now, it takes, it, obviously, a couple of minutes to assess them uh, thoroughly, and they're probably only now halfway through the team. Thank you. Second row. Thanks. Uh, Jock, Jock, thoughts on the box uh, effort on defence? Yeah, ob ob obviously, defence is uh, kind of beautiful for me, so uh, I think and and all credit to, to to Scotland. You know they they a team that play with with uh, with great speed and they've got a good uh, innovation in terms of of how they attack. So we had to be really really sharp uh, in terms of of trying to cut off uh, all the 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 options. You know they can cre they can create something miraculous out of nothing. And uh, so we. A credit to the, the, the players. Um, there was a lot of hard work off the field, uh, but also on the field tonight to make sure that um, uh, they try and keep them at bay. And it's a tough. It was. It it, it, it took a lot. Thank you. Second row over here, please. Jacques, could I ask you about um, the traffic light system? Sort of what, without giving away sort of any. <laughs> yep. Any any without giving away any secrets. What sort of thing are you communicating, and how does it work? No, no. Listen. Uh, in terms of uh, of the lights, I, I don't know. It started here yeah, probably when we played France in Marseille, and uh, I don't know if you've if you've been pitch shot or close pitch shot. I mean, with this dome, the the, the 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 sound is phenomenal. So you can't you can't hear people. So our main thing is for us, because there's a lot of channels and working and talking. I mean, it's tough for us to sometimes uh, talk to our, to our support staff. So it's, uh, I think a lot of teams will have systems where is it the red, is it the green, or whatever. What's the extent of the injury? And uh, or the knock, or the how seriousness. And, and yeah, that, that, that's just for us to, to, to communicate yeah, with the support staff. Thank you. Second row, please. Question to Sia. Sorry, not related to the game. Uh, I'll tell you that last month at the Athletics World Championship, there was a conversation of a few African journalists from not rugby countries, Ethiopia, Kenya, and they speak of you as one of the most important people in Africa, not athletes, people. How do you deal with this enormous pressure around your personality? 
Um, I don't. The thing is, I don't see myself like that. Um, for me, I try and narrow um, that to just my kids and my brother and sister. That's who I want to be a role model for. And um, yeah, and and that's how I, I see it, you know. Because if I see myself um, as a giant, then you know it's not gonna take me anywhere. I'll get get it big headed, and uh, especially around the team, we have no ego policy, you know. Um, the team is far bigger than the individual. I'm nothing without the team, so that's really important. So I'm so grateful for coaches and especially Coach uh, Rusty and Chaco know me since I was young. Whenever my head gets a little big, they pop it for me. So some of the players too also tell me when I'm getting too big for myself. And I really enjoy that. And I think it's important, you know, everything, you as a person, you need to be a human being before anything else, you know. And, and that's how I like, try and live and carry myself. And we come from a nation where you think of we before, before I, and I think that makes it easy for me just to keep grounded. Thank you. Just pass the microphone behind, please. Thank you. I see one for you as well. Um, Scotland, I think, won two scrum penalties right at the end of the, the first half, and, of course, Finn put over that penalty. You came out in the second half and immediately won another one back. What was said at half-time around the scrums? Was anything said at half-time? Yeah, of course. We, it was quite clear. We didn't start the way we normally start, the intensity that we wanted to bring. That's a big thing about us. Good start, best start, it doesn't matter. Intensity should be there, and that wasn't up to standard for us. And the conversations are clear, and anything that they say to us, we already know because we think the same. So we just told ourselves we gotta, we got we got to be better. It's as simple as that because set piece is important, and that's why we, we came out there with that kind of, of energy. Thank you, gentlemen, there. Please thank you for your patience. See, yeah, it's not the, the match, but what do you think about uh, the microphone? Please speak into the microphone, please. Which children? The anthem. Is it in French? You, you, you understand? Yeah. yeah, what do I think about the anthems? Yes, yes. Our anthems are fine. We, we, I mean, we, we barely hear anyway because we sing so loud, our voices are so horrible, that's what we hear. And I think our focus is not on that. Our focus is to all I'm thinking about, I'm singing. The anthem is what's the next job? What do we gotta do? So I've got no complaint. Uh, we, I got the energy that I needed out of the anthem, you know. So and the people, there was a lot of Kenyan Kenyan gold jerseys out there. Uh, we could hear them loud and clear. So it was it, it was special. Thank you, gentlemen. There, please raise your hands. All right. And then next. Question for uh, for Jack. Uh, Manny missed free kicks today before uh, Faf uh, uh, took charge of it. Is this lack of success a concern for uh, you for the rest of the competition? Not if he wins man of the match. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't. <laughs> Not if he wins man of the match. <laughs> Thank you. Then two behind. The gentleman with his hand up. Thank you. And then you at behind. Thank you. Hi, Jacques. Um, can I just ask you how this win um, affects your planning and perception of how the rest of the games in the pool, and in particular that game in 13 days' time against Ireland? Yeah, I think the first thing um, <clears throat> is maybe to go back a step to the warm-up games. And the warm-up games is warm-up games. I think we saw that with France's performance. I think we saw that with England's performance. So everybody read a lot in warm-up games. Our game against New Zealand, it's got no bearing. There's no pressure. It's a warm-up game. It's to prepare you for a World Cup. So, but this is the real thing. And there is a lot of pressure in World Cup. So I think in terms of, of us, uh, this was a slippery one for us, like I mentioned before. Uh, you play number five in the world. They have the ability to knock off anyone on the day. So um, for us, it's the first step in the right direction. To get out of the pool is going to be massive. We knew that. Um, uh, and our next focus is literally Romania. Uh, we need to make sure that we, uh, we, we, we won't even think about Ireland. Uh, the only thing I will, think, will look at Ireland is obviously Romania playing against Ireland. So we won't even think about Ireland uh, in 13 days' time. It's Romania and Romania alone, and obviously then the, the opportunities and the, the stuff that we got wrong tonight, we need to fix that uh, before we, we can go further. Um, Thank you. So, sorry, I just want to, on Mani's question with the kicking, 
Like, f from a player's point of view, you know, this question gets asked quite a lot when he misses kicks. Like, we, <laughs> we play as a team, and sometimes you're not good at one thing on the day, but the way he attacked today, the way he took control of the team, he's, how he is a general amongst us, people forget that and they remember the stuff that he does. Faf can kick, Chelsea can kick, there's a lot of guys that we can call upon. So if someone is lacking somewhere, somebody else takes over. It's the same as me. Sometimes I don't know what to call in the game. Dwayne will call, Eben will call, or Money makes a call. So if someone is lacking somewhere, somebody else picks up for them. So he's not going to be good at everything every single day. You know, there's sometimes some fly off, you have to hide them, they can't tackle. He tackles there with us. So you can't have everything on the day. Sometimes we lack somewhere. That's why we work together. We don't stress about it. If he misses it, next time we go. It's the same as a throw. If you throw a stupid throw, you don't do it intentionally. So we're working as a group. We work together. And he has confidence in us. And when far first to kick, nobody stresses. We move on because he's going to be maybe as good on the day. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> amigo. <laughs> Thank you. Gentlemen, right at the back, please. Thank you for your patience. Jacques. Uh... <laughs> Jacques, just to go back to the traffic lights for a moment, could you explain a little bit further? You mentioned this uh, Chelsea game against Arsenal. Could you explain the decisions on injuries? But is, is it also tactics? Is it penalty kicks at the posts or line out? No. And, and also, did you have to get permission from World Rugby to do it? No, I don't think. I think communication. Uh, you can do hand signals if you want. I'm not, no, I don't think you need any permission from World Rugby. Uh, uh, like I say, it's a, it's, a, it's a method. I was at Munster and the calls were read if it's a serious thing that we must uh, consider a substitution. Uh, Amber is, listen, let's give this guy five or ten minutes to see if he's okay. And Green is, listen, it's okay. Uh, we can go on. So it's something we used at Munster uh, in 2016, 17, and it's just something that we continue with. It's just an easy way without, um, you can think if we talk on the radio, we want to talk tactics. So to talk to medical people about injuries just consumes the channels. So it's just an easy way to, to, to get them to, uh, to, to get in our heads. Does it make sense? But nothing tactical at all? No. Thank you. OK, thank you. Tom? Two more questions. I think gentlemen with the microphone there, please. Uh, Sia, you spoke of intensity. And it was visible to us that there was a big jump in intensity after halftime, in the first 15 minutes after halftime. But in terms of being on the pitch, how do you assess whether intensity is at the right level or not? Or how do you communicate that it needs to go up in real time? Um, well, we feel in... The, and how we hit the hit in the scrum, how our mall is working, how hard are we getting up, how quickly are we getting off our feet, and what are we doing? Are we tackling and are we staying on the ground? Are we having second efforts? That's the kind of intensity we're talking about, you know. And I think in the first half, we, we didn't feel it, and it took long. And then when we got in in the second half, it was just a, a mental switch as a group from the first scrum. We said, we we got to bring in, it's all eight. And it's just about how many times are you going to get up and do something and how many battles are you going to get involved in. That's what we get checked on. When I'm tired and I can't anymore, like today, they could see, they're like, OK, he must go now. And that's the thing about our team. You don't wait. You just give everything. And sometimes in the first half, I say, I can't anymore. And that's why in the last two games, I got taken off so early. So we, that's why intensity is so important. Put yourself in battles over and over again until you can't because the guy that's on the bench that's waiting to go is probably going to do it better than you when you're at 70 percent. Thank you. Last question. The gentleman here, please. Raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, Grigor Tonsen was there before you. He, he thinks your offensive game is better than four years ago in Japan. What do you think about? Uh, our offensive attacking game. Offensive game, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the key thing for us after 2019 is, and I've said it the other day, I, I think rugby has changed a little bit. Um, you must still be able to, with a defensive game and a good kicking game and a good territory game, you must be able to grind out a win. But I think if you look at where, if you look at France last night, if you look at England, they did it in a different way. But you need to be able to score points. Uh, and. And I think that's the difference maybe between 20, 2019 and, and, and 2023. But this is only knockouts. Ach, this is only uh, pool stages. 
Uh, if you look at the history of World, of, of, of World Cups, the, the knockout stages, it's, uh, if you go statistically, it differs quite a lot from the knockouts. So I, I can't tell you what knockouts will look like. But if you look at the big games like European Cup final, if you look at the top 14 final, if you look at uh, the Premiership final, uh, if you look at the Japan final, which, where, where some of our players play, the, the teams that, that win those big final games, they, they had the ability to score points. So I think where we could grind it out in 2019 with a, let's say, a 19-16 win against Wales in the semi-final, you might still need it in knockouts. That's why I say I'm not 100% sure what it will look at in knockout rugby. But uh, the difference for me when I look at the, the top competitions, and I know it's clubs, uh, teams tend to score points. Okay. Thank you very much.